He has risen. He has risen indeed. Glory be to God. Morning has broken. And on that wonderful morning, light poured out of that tomb. The light of the world. The risen Savior. Hallelujah. We're going to look as Jesus prepares his disciples and go through the in the book of John. Uh, if you will, grab your Bibles or turn on your devices and go to John 15. We're going to read verses 12 and 13. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. In this part of John, John is divided into two books. The first half is the book of signs, seven miracles Jesus did. The last half of the book is the book of glory, focusing on the cross. That is the glory of Jesus. And indeed, the whole Bible focuses on this one pivotal moment in history, Easter Sunday. Jesus conquers death and rises from the tomb. What a joy. This whole last half of John just focuses on a few days. And right here we see Jesus preparing his disciples. He's teaching them to be ready. He's teaching them that they will have trouble. And he's teaching them to love. And then he gives them an example. He says, what, what is love like? This is what love is like. That you love each other as I have loved you. And that you would lay down your life for those you love. Greater love has no man than to lay down his life for another. Paul expands on this a little bit in, in Romans 5, 7. He says, one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare to die. But God shows his love for us while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Even though we were his enemies, he died for us. Unfortunately, I've had two tragedies I know of in my life where men have given their lives for others. One was many years ago, uh, a grandfather whom I had the honor of taking care of as a physician for many years. He was at a North Carolina beach with his family. His daughter got caught up in the riptide. And this grandfather raced and jumped into that water, swam. Her, the daughter's husband also came. And they got her and got her out of the riptide. But at that moment, way out in the water, this grandfather likely had a heart attack, and he just passed away in their arms, giving his life, trying to save his daughter. Another friend of mine <clears throat> had a similar accident. His daughter and his son-in-law were at a, close, a beach close by in North Carolina, and one of the children of this family got caught in that riptide. And his father, who was in good shape, swam out, grabbed the child, got them out of the riptide, and then the child was able to return safely, but the father kept fighting and fighting the riptide until he drowned. Both the father and the grandfather gave their life for their children. As a father and a grandfather, I think I would do the same. I hope I would. I've never had that opportunity but I would hope that I would do the same, that I would not hesitate to jump into an ocean with a riptide to save one of my children or grandchildren, that I would not hesitate to run into a street with a speeding car coming quickly to push a child out of the way. I pray I would do that. 
But listen, would you jump into the ocean? Would you jump into the street to save a stranger? Would you jump into the same ocean, the same street to save an enemy, someone whom you greatly dislike? Would you do that? Don't you see Jesus died for all of us? We're all sinners. He died for all of us. Yes, many of us love him, but many people despise him. They reject him. But that didn't stop his love, did it? He demonstrates his love shows how much he loves us, you and he lo how much he loves me. And he died for us, even those who despise him. And then he commands us. This is my commandment, he says. We are to love likewise. Love likewise. A couple of chapters over, Jesus is getting ready to go to the cross. And we're going to see in chapter 16 some words that are going to encourage them. He says in chapter 16, verse 20, the end of the verse 20, you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. Don't you remember the psalm we had this week in our devotion that weeping will last all night long, but joy comes in the morning? Don't you see how God's word says the same thing over and over? Sorrow we will all experience. But in that nighttime of weeping, there will be an end because joy comes in the morning. Jesus knows right now as he's teaching this truth to his disciples that they will be later on this night, they will be scattered, just scampering around, escaping, trying to save their own lives. They will be hiding behind locked doors. One will betray him with a kiss. Another will deny him three times, deny that he ever knew Jesus. And he knows that these disciples, their hearts will be crushed. They will be filled with fear, filled with worry, filled with dread. What will we do? We are lost now. Who will save us? But oh, happy day. Oh, glorious day, the next day and a half on that Easter morning, that first Sunday morning, Jesus burst forth from the tomb. He gives us this joy. And during the night, we have sorrow. But during the day, when he comes forth, we have his joy. Great love. Oh, yes, the night will be dark. But what a difference the morning makes. What a difference the morning makes. We all have dark nights, don't we? We have dark nights that come to us. We have dark nights that haunt us. I remember a dark night that came to me about 15 years ago when my father first started getting sick with his heart. He was very ill, having major surgery. I remember driving. We were driving back and forth from Blacksburg to Virginia Beach where he was living. I remember one night knowing that surgery was upcoming. I just arrived and I wept, Lord. No, he can't go tonight. He can't go tonight. I love my dad. I remember weeping most of the night 
and all oh, that night was so dark. But yet the morning came. Dad successfully recovered from surgery and he would go on to live several more years. Oh, what a difference that morning made because that light of the world can never, ever be overcome. And that light came to these disciples as we turn the page. Look what happens. John, he and Peter were the first ones that rushed to the tomb in this account. John, the writer of, of this gospel, was there. And he, when he went in, he saw the empty tomb. He saw it. And he believed. And just the next day, Jesus appeared to everybody, but in particular to Thomas, who was, remember, questioning and doubting. I want to see his, put my fingers in his, the holes in his hands and my hand in them, wound in his side before I believe. Well, he came to those group of, to that group of disciples, again, hiding behind doors, still afraid. And look at these beautiful words. Look at these beautiful words that Thomas uttered. Jesus came into the room and he told Thomas, here, put your hand in my side. Thomas didn't even respond to that. He answered him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said, you have, have you, you have believed because you have seen. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. My Lord and my God. This is the most profound statement that a human has made in all of Scripture. The most profound proclamation. Jesus is Lord. Lord of John's life. Lord of Thomas's life. Lord of our life. And Jesus is God, the creator God. Thomas touched nothing because the creator God of the universe touched him. There are nights that you struggle. You may not have sleep right now. There's lots of things going on in our world right now where you may have Sleepless nights like I had those many years ago. Tossing and turning. Our hearts are heavy. Our hearts are troubled. We are worried about a virus that is sweeping our land and thankfully hitting a peak and starting to come down. We are worried about the impact of this on our jobs, on being furloughed, small business owners, on revenues, because of this worry, there can be strife in families, struggles among husbands and wives, struggles with addiction, struggles with children, grandchildren. Things seem to be dark. And sometimes in the middle of the night, you may think there is no hope, no peace, no plan, just desperation. But just as Jesus touched Thomas. Fall on your knees and let Jesus touch you and proclaim him as your Lord and your God and let your weeping, let your fears, let your worries turn to joy through the Son of God who died for us. So the cross demonstrates God's love for us, how he loved us so much. Even while we were sinners, he died for us. And he commands us that we are to love likewise, even our enemies. What a difference a day makes when you're weeping, when you're struggling, when morning breaks and the dawn awakens, the light shines in the darkness and you See, Jesus, our weeping and our worries will turn to joy as we fall on our knees and worship our Lord and our God. But listen, 
That's not all. There is something else that happens. There's something else that happens. Jesus gives us life, but oh, there's more. In this beautiful verse, it tells the whole story. Jesus, when he rose that Sunday morning 2,000 years ago, gives us eternal life, gives us hope. But listen to this. For our sake, this is in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Look at this heavenly exchange, this divine exchange. Jesus on the cross takes our sin on his shoulders. And as he is, dies, he buries them with him. And as he is resurrected, he gives us the righteousness of who? The righteousness of God Almighty. He gives us. So not only does he give us life abundantly and eternally, and the hope and the joy and the peace, he gives us God's righteousness. Oh, brothers and sisters, what a joy. As I close this sermon, I hope the technology will allow you to see a slide that should be on the screen right now. This slide shows a group of doctors and nurses who in Florida, in Miami, I went up to the top of a hospital to the helipad there where the, uh, the rescue helicopters come in with patients. And they're kneeling and praying. And as you know, the helipad is painted red with a white cross in the middle, and all the arms of the cross are equal. But as a photographer, I noticed something I want you to notice also. The photographer, the photographer used a wide-angle lens to capture all the people, but in doing so, he exaggerated the cross. And the arm that comes towards the camera is lengthened. And if you look at that cross, it is the cross of Jesus with that long arm that went into the ground and the shorter cross arm upon which he was nailed. The cross of Jesus has come to those men and women who are giving their lives they could sacrifice their life. They could catch the virus and not live, but they are on the front line, giving their lives. Because you see, that's what healthcare workers do. I've been there and done that in SARS and MERS and the swine flu, and Katrina and the tsunami. Healthcare workers give their life on the front line. It just comes naturally. But Jesus, through his love on that cross, demonstrates his love, that he would die for us, even those who despise him and lay down his life. And we, he commands, are to go and do likewise. We're to give our life, even for those that may be our enemy. What a difference a day makes. What a difference with the morning, when the morning and the weeping of the night is overpowered by the light of that beautiful Easter morning. That light that turns our joy, turns our sorrow into joy, turns our weeping into joy. Yes, we will have sorrow. Yes, I will cry at nights. Yes, you will cry at nights. But God will take that weeping and turn it to joy. And I know that many of you are struggling right now, but I want you to understand, Jesus, through his cross, demonstrates how much he loves us. And he died for us. And he is going to turn your weeping, your sorrow into joy as you fall on your knees and worship him as our Lord and our God, and he gives you, he gives me the righteousness of God. He has washed away our sin and given us his perfect right relationship with the creator God 
of the universe. Love him, embrace him, and fall on your knees and worship him, calling him your Lord and your God. And I pray right now, if there are you, you in this audience listening and watching, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please email me. It's on the screen. Please talk to a Christian brother or sister. Please let me know that we can talk with you, pray with you, and show you how much Jesus loves you. And I pray that we will all feel this love, feel this joy, even in the midst of our sorrow, and give glory and honor to our Lord and our God. Pray with me. Father God, in the midst of darkness, it is hard to see joy. It is hard to understand peace. Lord, I pray right now that your love with which you went to the cross and died for us and gave us new life as this new morning bursts forth. What a joy. You have turned our grieving and our sorrow to joy. You have turned our worry into peace. Lord, we just fall on our knees and worship you as our Lord and our God because you have given us new life and you have given us this right relationship, this righteousness of God. Oh, Father, how can we thank you for the gifts that you have given us on this wonderful Easter morning? May we, like Thomas, just simply say, my Lord and my God, I love you. Amen.